I had a request for number 14 out of chapter 3 and specifically part C and part D. This whole problem is talking about the solubility of polypeptides. And in the setup of the problem, they're reminding you that one method for separating polypeptides makes use of their different solubilities. And it tells you in the setup something that you should know, that solubility in water will depend on the relative polarity of the R groups in the peptide, and specifically the ionized group, the ionized groups. So to be soluble in water, you've got to be able to interact with water. So solubility will rely on having polar groups present in the R groups, and also ionized groups. Both ionized and polar groups can interact with the dipole in water that we talked about in earlier lectures, and that interaction is the basis of solubility. So the, f so the first um, comparison that we're going to look at is the peptide that's made up of alanine, serine, and glycine repeated five times compared to asparagine, serine, and histidine repeated five times and the pH that we're asked to consider is pH 6. So which peptide is going to be more polar? Well right off the bat I'm going to cross off alanine because it doesn't have um, an R group that's polar or ionizable in fact neither does glycine so I'm going to cross that off. Now I'm also going to cross off serine because it's in both peptides so if it's in both peptides it's not going to have an influence in one that's not seen in the other. Serine is going to be, um, or serine is a amino acid residue that has an R group that's ionizable. Sorry, I'm not an ionizable group, but a group that can participate in a hydrogen bond. Therefore, being polar being able to participate in hydrogen bonds with water. But since we've got that in both peptides, we cross those off as well. And so then we're looking at the rest of our peptide. And we see that this peptide has asparagine, which has polar covalent bonds, which can interact with water, lending, leading to solubility. And then histidine um, at pH 6 is going to be half deprotonated, half protonated, and so the protonated form is going to be able to interact with water and promote solubility as well. The pK of that group is 6.0. So because of those things, you would pick this peptide as being more soluble. In the next part of the problem is D and we've got peptide alanine, aspartate, glycine repeated five times or asparagine, serine, histidine repeated five times 
and we're talking about a pH of 3. Again, for simplicity, I'm going to cross off the groups that have our groups that are neither uh, polar nor ionizable. Because the more ionized groups you have, the more soluble the peptide, let's compare ionized groups between these two peptides. At pH 3, this aspartate is going to be partially protonated and partially deprotonated, and there's going to be a lot more, or significantly more amount, of the protonated version, which has no charge. So there's partial, uh, partially ionized. That's because the pKa of the R group for aspartate is 3.9. Now you'd be given this number. I'm taking this off of a pKa table. Let's contrast this to histidine. Histidine has a pKa of 6. And at pH 3, it's going to be all protonated. And so every single side chain on histidine is going to have that positive charge. Every single side chain is going to be able to interact with water. That's going to lead to more solubility. So again, this is our choice for the more soluble peptide. We also have these groups, these nonpolar groups um, there as well, promoting solubility. The main aspect is that we only have a portion of this peptide, only a fraction can interact with water. And so that's not going to be as soluble as a peptide where every single peptide is going to be able to interact with water. And this is specifically at this given pH.